Alright, what's up YouTube? Here with a video today. Just got up, drinking my coffee. Got my girlfriend. I got my dog. He's very excited. Alright. Get back with. Alright, today I've seen a lot of comments in my comment section about my close grip bench press. Most people seem to understand the concept, but a few people were saying it's not close grip, it looks like a normal grip. For one, if you're bench pressing with that close of a grip, um, you're probably not benching optimally because that's definitely a close grip. Close enough where that could be considered universally a close grip. But the way I train, basically, whatever grip is your strongest grip, that's your normal grip. Whatever grip allows you to bench press the most amount, most amount of weight, that's your normal grip. That should be your, your regular grip. So therefore, any grip that's wider than that or closer than that should make you weaker. You should, shouldn't be as strong. So if you're noticeably weaker or, or, or on a wider or closer grip, then that should be considered a, 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 cons a completely different grip. Um, some people are stronger. You know, like Jeremy Hornstraw was a very close grip bench presser and was stronger with a generally closer grip and his grip was close enough where a lot of people would consider it a close grip for them but that just happened to be his normal bench press grip so a close grip for him was a really close grip bench press um, so for me anything two to three inches inside my normal grip I'm, I'm a good 20 25 pounds a weaker on the bench press and that that can be considered I mean that's technically its own variation at that point so that's a close grip bench press. Anything two to three inches wider, I'm also weaker. Um, because if I wasn't, then if I was stronger, the wider I went, then that's the bit that's the grip I'd use because I'm trying to use the most move the most weight. But it doesn't the normal grip I use is what helps me move the most weight. I mean it's pretty obvious because I did a 345 close grip and then I moved my grip out like three inches and did 295 for 10 which is like a 390 max, um, so there's clearly a big difference. But that's my point of this video is not only grips, but everything when it comes to lifting is individual to the lifter. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. They don't individualize their lifting. They think there's this universal law or rule in lifting. You know, there's a universal best program, a universal optimum routine, a universal optimum variation, universal grips, and it's not. It's individual. The best lifters train individually, dude. They don't train with, like, the hive mindset. Uh, you got to train for you. Everything is individual to you. What works for you may not work for somebody else and vice versa. Um, that's the main point of this video. It's going to be a quick, short video because it takes forever to upload these things. Um, but... That's the gist of it, guys. Um, that's why people hire coaches, because if you're really serious about lifting, you can't just get these general programs and expect them to work and follow general advice. If you're really getting into it, coaching is the best way to go about it, and, and they will train you specifically. That's why they need to know your lifts, your training history, everything about your training. So that way they can they can devise a program, a routine that's optimal for you. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. That's that's what I want to get out there. Close grip is individual for the lifter. When I put a lift out and say it's close grip, it's most definitely close grip. Um, anyway, until then, next time, peace, guys.